Our scene sure looks pretty. So now we can uh, move on to this building. Uh, I've got some reference images that I'm kind of digging, so I'm gonna try and mash them up to make something cool looking and imposing. So I start by going into Illustrator and just blocking out the basic shape of the building. Now before I go crazy, uh, you know, doing stuff in Illustrator, um, I want to make sure that what I create is actually going to work in the context of the frames that I've already set up. Um, so real quick, you can see here I've brought in all of those reference images that I liked. This was kind of the main one that that really jumped out at me, but there was aspects of these other images that I liked. So I just wanted to be looking at them while I'm designing this. Um, and one thing that occurred to me was. You know, this building here is very tall and skinny, and if I hop back into Cinema 4D for a second, you can see that the way this frame is blocked out, this building isn't really that skinny. You know, it's a little bit fatter and bigger, and I want to make sure that the building I design in Illustrator uh, still has these same proportions so that, you know, when I pop it back in and get rid of this placeholder building, it all makes sense. So what I'm going to do... Um, is actually select this building here, and I'm gonna select one of these polygons, all right? So I'm in polygon mode, I just select that one, and Cinema 4D down here tells me the exact size of that polygon, okay? So it's uh, 73 by 248. So why don't we just round up? We'll say 75 by 250, all right? So just remember those numbers, 75 by 250, and I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to double click in Illustrator, right? If you do that, this pops up. And the width can be 75 and the height can be 250. And now what this gives me is a rectangle with the exact same proportions are pretty darn close to what we were using in Cinema 4D. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually invert the stroke and the fill here. So I've got this nice little guide, okay? Um, I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to actually call this guide. And I'm going to cut it off of the building, cut that shape off the building layer and paste it into the guide layer. And the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to design on a grid. It's going to make life a lot easier in terms of uh, making sure that there's symmetry and things like that with the building. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to my view menu and I'm going to turn on show grid. And then I'm also going to turn on snap to grid. And what I want to do is move this guide, right, so that... The, one of these corners is right on a grid point, okay? And then I wanna come down here, and I basically just wanna cheat this, cheat these points over. So I'm hitting the A key to go to this direct selection tool, which lets me select individual points. And then I can grab those points and just pull them, and they will snap to the grid because I have snap to grid turned on. If they're not snapping, make sure you have snap to grid turned on. And then I can do the same thing on these points on the side. So I'm gonna select this point, Come up here, select this point, and then I'm just gonna move them just a little bit. And this one didn't move, so let me move that one individually. And so now I've got a shape that's pretty much the right size. Um, it's, it's very, very, very close to the size of the polygon that we measured in Cinema 4D, but everything's on a grid now. Okay, and so this is gonna make it a little bit easier to do symmetry, and this would, this would actually be a lot easier if uh, I made this a little bit bigger, I'm gonna hold shift so I can make it the right size. And you see what I'm doing? I'm looking for these thicker grid lines and I basically wanna make this so that, I wanna make it big enough so that it takes up, you know, one, two, three, four of these big kind of areas. So let me just pop back in here real quick and snap these points over, all right? And now we are gonna be set up to pretty easily, there we go, make symmetrical stuff because we know the middle of the building is going to be right here, right? This this line right here. And so it's going to be easy to be, you know, to be symmetrical and all that good stuff. All right, so this is my guide. I'm going to bring this down here um, and I want, to, uh, I want to make it a little bit lighter in color. So I'm just going to go here to my color and pick a lighter color so I can still see it and then I'm gonna lock it, okay? So now I can see the contour of that building, like that, the right size, but now I can go to my building layer and actually start building out this building. So, you know, what I like about, one of the things I like about this building is that there's kind of different levels to it, right? Um, if we zoom in closely, you can see that you've got this bottom level and then it juts in a little bit, then it goes up 
and then it juts in, and I kind of like it. it. gives it this cool kind of pointy, staggered effect. So I want to do that on this building. So what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool, and it's going to snap to this grid, which is going to make it really easy to start building this up. All right, and then I'm just going to copy and paste this shape and move it up like this. And these shapes, I can actually make them darker. It doesn't matter what color I'm making any of this. And then once I've got this one moved up a little bit, um, I can move it inwards while holding the Option key. Right, so it moves in from the center. Cool. And then I'll do the same thing again. And maybe this section, you know, looking here, maybe this set, this this second section should be a little bit longer. So let me just move this up like this. Move this one down a little bit, like so. And then I'll copy it again. Scoot it in, and I'm just sort of, I'm just kind of playing around here. I just want to see what we're getting. There we go. Cool, and, and then maybe like at the top, we can have a couple of extra little little sections like this. Cool, all right, so you've got this interesting shape. I can select all these shapes now, and I wanna make sure that my Pathfinder is open, so if it's not, you go to Window, Pathfinder. The Pathfinder tool lets you combine multiple shapes, all right? So I've got all these shapes, and I hit this first one, Unite. Basically merges all those shapes together, and now I have this outline of my building. All right, um, and it's still very chunky looking, and it's kind of cool, um, and I think that's going to work. And because uh, you know, I one thing I should probably do is actually extend it so it goes all the way to the top. So let me hit undo for a minute, um, and I'm just going to knock this one up to the top like that, knock this one up a little bit, and then select them all again and pathfind. Okay, so now I've got uh, you know something that is the right uh, proportion. Um, so that when I, you know, bring this into Cinema 4D and I extrude it, it's going to line up very nicely with this shape that's already in there. Cool? All right. So the next thing I want to do is make a copy of this shape. All right. Um, I'm just going to make a copy. I'm going to move it over here to the side. Here we go. Um, and I'm just going to leave that copy there, okay? Because now on this copy, what I want to do is add some detail, like windows and interesting stuff like that, okay? Um, so I do like these windows. I think they're neat. Um, but I think that, you know, one of the things that kind of fooled me the first time I looked at this image, you know, these are all individual windows, but, the, you know, in the center of this building here, the windows kind of mush together, and they look like these really long, tall strips of glass, which I thought were kind of creepy looking and interesting. So I wanted to try and make something like that. So what I'm going to do, uh, let me just come down here, and I'm just going to pull up a really long strip like this. All right, and I'll have it go, I don't know, maybe... Maybe that's a little too high, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in here, and I'm just gonna pull this shape down a little bit. Maybe it comes right up to where this level kind of ends, right there. Okay. And I thought it would also be interesting if this was kind of pointy, right? Um, now you can see here. There we go. I want to make sure it's snapped to the grid. It'll make it a lot easier to make symmetry and stuff. I want the top of this window to be a little pointy. I think it'll make it a little kind of cooler looking. Um, so I'm gonna grab my pen tool. Uh, I need to turn off snap to grid temporarily, right? And because I've got my, uh, my smart guides turned on, as I move my pen right over here, it'll tell me where the center is and then I can add a point there. Pardon me. I need to make sure that I'm getting that little plus symbol right next to the pen and then click, okay? And then I can select that point and move it up and have a little pointy kind of window like that up at the top. Cool? All right, so I've got one of those, and then I want to I wanna copy it. So I'm just going to hold Option and Shift and hit the left arrow key, and it's just going to knock that thing over, right, and, and make a copy of it. And then I can just turn my uh, Snap to Grid back on, and it'll snap it to a grid. All right, and, uh, and I moved it down a little bit by accident. So let's knock it back up, and there we go. All right, so now we've got two of these things. And, you know, it may look like, let me turn off, uh, let me actually hide the grid for a minute. 
So, you know, these may, these look really thin kind of out of context here. Um, but one of the things that's, that's actually kind of tricky when you're building stuff in 3D is to make sure that things look big if they're supposed to be big. And a good way of doing that is by loading stuff up with detail because when things are big, uh, you know, big features like windows tend to look small because if it's big and it, you know, and you're seeing the whole thing on your screen, that means you're far away and you should see tons and tons of detail. So I want to make, I don't know, maybe another, another copy of these. Um, and then, uh, maybe what I can then do is just grab these three. Let me turn my grid back on. The hotkey is uh, command apostrophe. Okay. And, uh, and then I can just come over here and set up symmetry on the other side, okay? Um, to make it easier to see these, what I might do is actually flip the stroke and the fill. This will make it a little bit easier as we're working to kind of gauge. Um, so the next thing I wanna do is start adding some windows, and I want some variation in them, so what I think I'll do is I'll have the windows at, this, at the bottom be a little bit bigger, right? So maybe uh, what we'll do is we'll have these windows be uh, four squares, right? Four grid squares. Um, and let me put one down here at the bottom. Let me move this thing. Illustrator's giving me trouble. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys. Let me select it, move it down here. There we go. Okay, so I want one at the bottom and then I'm gonna hold Option and Shift and move another one up, let's say there. And actually they shouldn't be at the bottom, they should be up a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna then copy this one again. And once I copy one, you can hit Command D, right? Command D, what it does is it, um, it does the transform again command. So whatever the last transform you did was, it will just do it again, okay? Um, and then I can copy this and move it over here. And then maybe copy this and move it over here. Cool. All right, and then I can grab these windows here, and I can copy them over to this side, and then I can uh, control click and say transform reflect, and I wanna reflect them on the vertical axis, <laughs> axis, the vertical axis, there we go, All right, and it'll just flip them for me. All right, so now we're keeping that symmetry and it's really easy. So now moving up a little further on the building, we can make those windows a little smaller. So then what we could do is make little groups of like one grid square windows, like this. All right, and because we have snap to grid turned on, it's actually really easy to make these. Cool, all right, so now we've got these groups of three. Okay, and I'm gonna copy this group and move it up here. And it's giving me trouble uh, because what it's trying to do is it's trying to snap the center point of this to the grid. Um, so maybe if I select a whole group of these and move them up, it'll be better. There we go. And then I can hit that Command D key, right? And, uh, and then up here, I gotta get rid of this one. All right, but you can see how quickly we're starting to build up a very detailed kind of thing here. Let me select another group of these. Copy them up here. Let me try copying a group of four. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to kind of manually copy groups of these and snap them back into the place so they, they show up in the right place. And this is basically, this is basically the process I'm gonna use to, you know, just build up a whole bunch of detail in this building, all right? so. Um, so I won't make you sit through the rest of this process, but I do want to talk about how this is going to be used. So, you know, I'm thinking that this is the front of the building and, you know, it's, so I've got basically like all these windows and these crazy shapes. And then I've also got the outline of the building. And so what I can do in Cinema 4D is extrude both of those, put them together and kind of have some cool variation and definition, um, you know, in the front of the building. But we're also gonna see the side of the building and I want the side to look a little different. So I'm actually gonna make a complete copy of this setup that's gonna be used for the side of the building, all right? Um, awesome, so this is step one in the process of making the building. So I just kept adding more windows and visual detail, kind of messing around and changing the shapes of some of these things, trying to make it more visually interesting. 
And just thinking about the fact that when this comes into Cinema 4D, it's gonna be really big, so I need a lot of detail on it. Once I had the front of the building kind of figured out, I did the side of the building and I made it look pretty close to the front of the building, but a little bit different so that we could kind of combine the front and the sides and get a little bit of variation when we modeled the building. And then it was time to export it. I need to make sure that uh, these shapes come into Cinema 4D the way I want them to. So the way that I'm gonna be using this is I basically want to extrude this shape and that's gonna be the bulk of the building. Then I wanna extrude this shape and I want all of these windows to be knocked out and then I can basically just you know put this, shape, this piece on top of this piece and it'll look like there's this building with this really intricate, complicated front to it. Um, so in order for that to work, I need to make sure that Cinema 4D understands that this shape needs to have all of these little shapes knocked out, okay? So an easy way to do that is to take all your shapes and just fill them with black. And before I do that, I'm gonna select this entire setup here, and then I'm gonna go in and hold shift and just deselect the outside, which sometimes can be difficult to do. Um, so another way I could do it is, um, Oh, I think I may have it grouped. So I'm gonna shift command G to ungroup them first. There we go. Um, and then I can go in and select this whole group, shift and get rid of the outline and then just group all these windows together, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is select all of this and I'm gonna make the fill black. And then I'm gonna use my pathfinder, but I'm gonna use the second option, subtract, okay? So I need to, uh, oops. Add a little window open here. Let's try that, there we go. And so now, I've basically taken that outer shape and knocked out all these inner shapes, okay? So now I know this is gonna work properly inside of Cinema 4D. All right, so we'll do the same thing with the side, and then we'll hop into Cinema 4D and start building this out. All right, so here are the outlines that I brought in from uh, Illustrator. And you can see that, um, you know, unfortunately, Cinema 4D loses any naming that you did. Um, so you gotta quickly rename these. So this is the front outline, and this is the side outline for the side of the building. Not out libni, but outline. And then this group here, uh, this is the side detail. And this is the front detail. Okay, and so just to double check that everything's working the way we want, uh, what I'm gonna do is take, um, take an extrude nerves and I'm just gonna put the front detail in there and say hierarchical, okay? And you can see that it's not, uh, it's not doing exactly what we want yet, so what I need to do, let me turn that extrude off for a minute, is come in here, um, right click on front detail null and say select children, so it selects every path in here and say connect objects. Okay, so then I can take this out and hide it and then turn the extrude back on and now we should have a perfect little, perfect little shape set up, okay? And basically all that did was it took all of those splines and it connected them to make them one spline and when you have one spline in Cinema 4D that has multiple parts, it's smart enough to figure out that, oh, this part's inside of this bigger part, that means it's a hole, all right? And I wanna check and make sure that it's working on the side detail as well um, because that's another really complicated one. So let me do the same thing. Uh, and let me, let me uh, make sure this is named correctly. So side detail, and I'm gonna say select children, connect objects, okay? And then I'm gonna copy this extrude. And uh, I'm going to delete front detail and put this copy of the side detail in there. And that works too. All right, good to go. So now we've got um, we've got our side detail and our front detail. So those are already set up. So let me just say front detail and side detail. All right, so we're already starting to build this thing out. Now, uh, right now, one problem we have is we are building this building, but we have absolutely no sense of scale, right, in relation to the scene that we've already kind of laid out. I wanna make sure that when I build this building, and I'm happy with it, I can copy and paste it back into the scene and not have to do a whole lot of work to like put it back in place and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go back to this scene here and just copy my building placeholder cube and paste it in here, okay? And you, so you can see that the scale of these doesn't match this yet. So let me go ahead 
Uh, I'm gonna group all of this building stuff under knowledge. We'll just call it building, okay? Uh, and what I wanna do is use that same axis center command to bring the axis all the way down to the bottom here, which will make it easy to line it up with this one. So I need to uh, first say include children and use all objects because this null has a bunch of objects underneath it. And I'm gonna say Y negative 100 execute and it's gonna move that axis right to the middle there, just like that, okay? So then I can zero out the Y I can actually just parent it under this building and zero everything out. And so that way, I can hit my T key and just scale it until it's the same scale as that building. All right, and I could pop into like my, uh, my front view here and get really precise. Cool, okay? And, uh, and then what I can do is, you know, I can build out the pieces and then just line them all up on the center of this thing. All right, so uh, really quickly, what I wanna do also is go into this building placeholder object, go to the basic tab and say X-ray. That's gonna let me see through it, so I can kinda use it as a guide just to make sure the volume of the building stays about the same. It's not gonna be exact, but it should be close. So we've got front detail, side detail. Um, so let's turn this off temporarily, and with front detail, let's also do the front outline. So I can just copy this, uh, I'm gonna hold command, and copy this extrude right there, and I'll call this front outline. And I will just replace just like that. And what I need to make sure is I need to make sure that these two splines are in the same place on X. Um, so why don't I just zero that out? Let's see here, and then these, uh, these extrudes are in the same place, right? Cool, and now these, splines are in about the same place. And so now what I need to do is take that front detail and push it out this way, all right? And basically what I'm doing is I'm creating just a little bit of a knockout here, okay? And what's cool about doing it this way is that now it's gonna be very easy for me to have a different texture on the inside of these windows than on the outside. Um, and you know, to actually model this properly would be kind of a pain. Um, and the good thing is the way we're gonna be texturing this, we don't have to worry so much about topology. You know, if I look at, um, let me just turn on lines for a minute, right? So this, this works pretty good, um, but if I was going to do more modeling to this, it would be uh, kind of a pain. I'd have to add a lot of polygons, and, and so um, it you know, would be kind of a pain to add more details and bevels and stuff like that to this building. And so I'm deliberately building it this way because I know that texturing-wise, the way we're gonna do it, uh, mapping the texture onto it, it's not gonna matter you know, how, how precise the topology is, all right? So we've got the... Uh, the front detail and the front outline, and those are locked together. And then we've got the uh, the side detail. Let me turn this off, we don't need that. Let me hide these for a minute. Make sure that we've got, uh, here we go. Uh, and then I'm gonna take my, uh, my front outline and I'm gonna extrude it a lot more. And what I wanna do is try and line up this front building with this kind of placeholder that we have, okay? So I'm gonna take the front detail and the front outline and let me move these up here. All right, let me, let, me, let me start organizing this a little bit better. So this is building setup, let's say, and we can turn it off, we don't need it right now. This is gonna be the actual final building. And so then I'm gonna use that same axis center tool. Uh, let me hit execute. And I think what's going on, let's see here. Right, I wanna make sure that we're actually getting this in the right place. Uh, it doesn't look like we are. So let me, let me just do this the old fashioned way. I'm just gonna move this so that it's centered right on that building, just like this. Move the axis to the middle, okay? And then I can parent it under that placeholder again and just zero everything out, right? And it'll be right in the middle. Now, I actually want it, let me move that null so it's kind of in the, the front of the building there. And then I'm gonna scoot the building forward, get out of axis mode. I wanna scoot it so it lines up with the front of that building. And then I can go into my front uh, outline and I can extrude that until it's as big as the original building. 
okay? Uh, cool, so now we've, we've started to actually get that final building and you can see that it, there's a ton of detail to it and we're gonna do the side as well. Um, and you know, it's because we, we shifted things around a little bit in Illustrator, it's not exactly the same size, it's not the same width. So if we wanted to, uh, we could just uh, scale it a little bit, um, you know, just to try and match it. I mean, it's gonna make these, it's gonna make the windows not quite as uh, square, but that's okay, that's not a big deal, and we could even make it a little bit taller to kind of counteract that. Um, okay, but I'm not gonna do that until the very end, um, but just so you know, that it, we're gonna be able to tweak this, it's not gonna be an issue. All right, so we've got the final building. Um, all right, let me hide the placeholder, and now we need to do the side of the building as well. All right, so what I wanna do is, um, let me copy final building, um, and just take these two pieces out of it, and we'll rename them side detail and side outline. I keep hitting the B, and then I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use the side detail spline here. So let me get rid of front detail and put in side detail. And uh, let me hide. Let's see here. I need to make sure that you know all of my my coordinates are making sense. So front detail um, is you know. X is zero, Z is zero. So I need to make sure it's the same thing for side detail. Zero, zero, there we go. Um, and then for side outline, so let me grab this. Here's the side outline. Um, and an easy, an easy thing to do is just parent it to the front outline and then zero out the X and the Z and then just delete front outline, okay? And so now we've got the, uh, the side detail. So this is actually the side of the building. And I can turn all this stuff off again. Building setup is off, so that's good. Um, and let me turn off this front for a minute. So here's the side of the building, okay? And what I wanna do is uh, in my final building, let me group these. And this is the front and this is the side. And for the side, I wanna use my axis center tool again. Uh, and I want to say um, point center. All right, so it's gonna it's gonna put that axis pretty much right in the center. It's actually not directly in the center, but that's okay. We'll fix it. It's actually not in the right spot at all. I want that right in the middle of this. All right, and I'm I'm kind of eyeballing it. We can try to use the axis center tool, but I think it's giving us trouble um, because because we've got splines that are extruding, and it's just not calculating it right, so that's okay. But basically what I wanna do is take that side and rotate it 90 degrees, okay? So you get something like this. All right, cool. So what I wanna do, and I wanna make sure that this is still kind of staying in that same footprint, okay? And it's not, so I need to take the side, and I need to move it back like this and then I need to go into the side outline and I need to extrude it less. There we go, so now it's inside that, that same footprint, okay? And you can see the reason that I modeled it this way and I had the side spline be a little different than the front is because now you get this cool kind of like contour to the building, right? It gives it a little bit more, it just makes it a little more interesting, frankly. Right, um, and so now you've got something with a lot more kind of these little nooks and crannies to it. Um, you know, I loaded in into my picture viewer here. I loaded in the reference images, and this was one of the references that that I liked. Even though it doesn't really look much like this building, I liked how there were just little like corners and pieces kind of jutting out kind of randomly. So I designed it that way in Illustrator so that it wouldn't line up perfectly, and you'd get kind of an irregular shape to it. All right, and then the rest of this stuff we're gonna be using as texture reference in a minute. All right, cool, so here is, um, here's basically our building. Now this side and the back don't have any detail. That's okay, you know, we did an animatic and one of the beautiful things about doing an animatic is I already know we never see anything except the front and this side of the building. So who cares about the back? Who cares about this side? We don't have to do it. And that's why doing an animatic, sometimes it can save you a ton of work because now I don't have to worry about that stuff. All right, so here we go. And then looking at that building placeholder, okay? Um, you know, I talked about potentially stretching this out a little bit, um, and we can try that. We can see what that's gonna look like. If I took the front and I used my scale tool, um, and actually I can, just, I can just do it this way. I'm just gonna scale it on X a little bit. 
we could see what that looks like. Let me turn that building placeholder off, right? If I made it a little bit more stretched out, I'm not sure it made that big of a difference to me. Um, you know, and I kind of like having a little bit more separation here. Um, and then maybe I'll do the same thing on the side. Maybe I'll just stretch that a little bit too. Not too much. Okay, cool. It just makes it a little bit blockier, a little bit chunkier, which kind of makes it fit better into that, um, into the placeholder cube that we already had. So here's our final building. I'm going to save this uh, so it doesn't end up building C4D, just in case, you know, better safe than sorry. Um, cool. And uh, there we go. So there is our building. Um, now I want to add a little bit more detail to it because, you know, I mentioned this before, but when things are supposed to look big, one thing that tells us they're big is we see tons and tons and tons of tiny little details, okay? So what I wanna do is add a little bit more detail around these windows. So let's do this. Let's go into the, uh, into the front and we've got this front detail spline here, okay? Um, and what I wanna do, let me think about this. Let's try this. Let's take, um, let's make a copy of this front detail spline. I don't need the extrude. And let's do this. Let's take um, let's take a rectangle spline. We need it to be very small, like two by two. And let's put this down here. What I want to do is try sweeping this rectangle through that front detail. All right, and this needs to be really, really small. And what it's doing needs to be even smaller. So like 0.2, 0.2. There we go. You see what it did? It just added these little kind of, just a little bit of trim to everything, okay? And that could be easily, so this would be like the front trim. And it's, that's easily just another thing we could add like a slightly different texture to it. Um, and it just gives it a little bit more visual detail. Um, and because we already had those splines set up, it was really easy to do that too. All right, and we could do the same thing on the other side. Um, so we'll take the side detail and copy that spline. And I can just copy and do the same thing here. We'll uh, just swap out side detail and front detail. And so now we get the side trim. Cool. All right, and this is all, this is like super easy to do. This is all, this is working great, all right? Um, cool, so then, let's see what else we could do. Now, there is gonna be a shot. Basically, the way we see this building is we see it, you know, from this really low angle like this, and then sometimes we see it from up top here, okay? Now when we see it from up top here, this is gonna look really flat, which might be, might be okay, but it'd be cool if there was a little bit more detail to it. All right, so what I wanna do for this is I want to have a, it's kind of like an extra piece up at the top here, I think. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna manually build this. I'm gonna take a cube and I'm gonna shrink it down so it's not so gigantic. And I'm gonna move it up to the top of the building, all right, and put it pretty much right in the center. And, uh, and I'm gonna scale it down like this. All right, and basically what I wanna do, I wanna center this as, as best I can and I'm just kind of eyeballing this because again, um, you know, the, the way we're going to texture this and the way we're going to be using it, um, we're going to be able to get away with a lot. Cool. Okay. So I'm adding this extra piece. I'm going to uh, make this editable. Um, and then I am going to use my knife tool. Uh, let me go into polygon mode here and I'm going to hit MK to bring up my knife and I'm going to set this to plane. And I want the X... Z, no, with the YZ, there we go, with the YZ plane. Basically, I want to add some cuts, right? And so I'm going to just tell it to make three cuts and slice it. Um, and so what this is going to do, let's see here. Ah, this isn't working the way I want. Three cuts, slice it. Don't restrict to selection, there we go. All right, and so here, uh, what this is gonna let me do is just add cuts to this really easily. So let me add four cuts. And what I'm trying to do is I wanna cut out the middle of this thing. Um, so I need to try and get sort of an even, an even kind of alignment of these cuts. Let's try six. 
that ought to work. Okay, cool. So now I have all these cuts, and what I can then do, um, I need to take this cube and just scoot it over. It's not centered. It's not really all that centered for me. Cube, there we go. That's better. Okay, and then I'm going to take these polygons and these polygons, and I'm going to extrude those out like that, okay? And then I'm going to take all of these top polygons, and I'm going to do an inner extrude, MW, inner extrude. Make sure preserve, uh, preserve groups is on, all right? So it, it, it does it like this, right? And I want like a little bit of a lip to it, and then I'm going to do another extrude, MT is extrude, and I'm going to extrude this down. Cool, okay? And so now I've got this extra little piece of geometry, and I'm going to try and center this a little bit better on that building. You can see it's not really centered right down here, so I'm just going to grab it and just gently nudge it over on X. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I've got this little top piece, um, and what I could then do is is just put like some little... Uh, you know, maybe like some little greebles in there. Um, greeble is a term. I'm not sure exactly where it came from. I heard it used when talking about Star Wars. It's basically just little, like, meaningless details that you add to something to make it look bigger. So what I want to do is um, I'm just going to take a, I'm going to make a cube, um, and I'm going to make that, uh, I'm going to make it really small. Um, it's probably going to need to be smaller than that. Let's try one by one by one. And I'm going to put that inside of a cloner. And First thing I need to do, I need to take this cube that I uh, that I made up here, and I need to save these polygons as a selection. So I'm going to go to Select and say Set Selection, and I'm going to call this uh, Roof Floor. And what I want to do is I want to clone this little tiny cube in object mode. I want to clone it onto this, and let me rename this Roof. This is my Roof object. I want to clone it onto the Roof. Uh, distribution on the surface, and for the selection, I want this selection tag. All right, and then I can just crank this up, and and you know you can make it even more if you want to. And I just want a bunch of them, and then I'm just going to call these greebles, greebles, and then add a random effector to that that is affecting the scale. All right, and so they can all be like slightly different shapes and stuff like that, and and um, you know, it's just gonna it's just gonna add like you know, and the, they're all gonna be the same texture, so they're not gonna stick out as much like that. It's just gonna give it a little bit uh, extra, you know. And so you could see here, there's one sticking out of there, um, which I don't want. So I'm gonna just go into the um, the seed and just change it until that doesn't happen. There we go. And all I I don't care what it looks like on this side or in the back or anything like that. All I care about is what does it look like for this shot when we're looking down at the plant. Cool? All right, so here's our building. Um, and you know, you could keep going and adding more detail, but I think that for our purposes, this is gonna work pretty good. All right, so here's the front, here's the side, um, and then we've got all this stuff on top. Beautiful, so we've got this building and now we need to texture it. So I, uh, I just copied the, uh, the building that we just made, and I'm just going to paste it right in here. And oh my god, look at that. Because of the way we modeled it, we made sure to use our placeholder building as a reference. It pastes it right in place, and I can just turn my placeholder building off, and here we go. Here is the building we just made with all the detail, all those windows, all that beautiful stuff ready to go. Um, and so I'm just going to save this uh, as a new as a new scene, so this is gonna be scene 01, uh, and we'll call this building working. All right, so uh, let's just do a quick render here. Um, so I've got my uh, basic crappy settings here, and I'm gonna use, I'm actually gonna switch this to the physical renderer. Um, I'm gonna leave global illumination on, um, and what I found is that sometimes the, uh, the physical renderer actually renders faster than the standard renderer, for certain situations, like if you have blurry reflections, um, which th that happens when you have something, uh, when you have a reflectance channel with a roughness setting, that makes the reflections a little bit blurry, and the physical renderer actually handles that faster. Um, and I just wanted to do a quick, you know, preview of this before we really get cranking on the textures, just to see 
overall how this is fitting into the scene, okay? And just get like a rough idea. Now, here's the thing about doing texturing. Texturing relies on so many different things. It obviously relies on the texture, um, but it's also gonna rely on things like the lighting and the modeling um, and things being reflected in the texture so the environment it's in plays into it. And so it's, it's not a fast process because you can make a texture that looks great on your little preview down here, but then in the scene it looks terrible. And so what I wanna show you is just some strategies that I kinda use um, when I approach texturing, okay? So what I wanna do is copy, uh, I'm gonna copy uh, the, fill, the fill light, this light, the skylight, um, and then I'm gonna copy the ground and the mountains. I'm gonna copy those, put them in a brand new scene like this, and scoot, scoot kind of far back like this, all right? There we go. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I want a new scene where I'm kind of, uh, and I don't even really need those mountains. I'm just gonna delete the mountains, okay? I just want the ground and the sky, all right? And basically what I'm gonna use this scene for, this scene's gonna render a lot faster because there's a lot less in it, okay? And um, I'm, I, you know, I don't even have global illumination turned on, but what I wanna do um, and let me actually turn off this displacer. Let me make this a lot simpler. Um, what I wanna do is basically have an object that's very simple, like a cube or something like this, right? Um, actually, an object that I really like to use, I think it, it gives you a good idea um, for, for textures, is you take a cube, you make it ed editable, you select every single face, and you do an inner extrude, and then an extrude, okay? This simple shape, for whatever reason, um, and let me make sure my fill light is uh, somewhere where it's gonna be actually useful. Let me turn this back to, uh, let's see here. Lines, here we go. Um, so that fill light, let me move that back. Just make sure that it's actually gonna be doing something to this shape, okay. So what's cool about this shape is it's got a few contours to it, um, and it can cast shadows on itself and stuff like that, and it'll just give you a, a decent idea of what a texture is gonna do in a scene, but it's gonna render super fast. So I need to turn global illumination on because that is definitely going to affect uh, the way a texture is going to look, and I also wanna make sure before I start doing this a million times that I have uh, auto load turned on. Okay, um, and I can say skip pre-pass if present. And this is gonna let me um, crank out renders a lot faster over time. I could also tweak the global illumination settings to make them a little bit lower. Um, but you can see that the global illumination, it really does affect the look. So I wanna make sure that's on when I'm looking at my textures here. Okay, and just for comparison, let's do a standard render and see if that's faster in this case. In some cases it is faster. Um, and because I don't have a texture on this thing, it actually probably is gonna be faster in this case. Um, and what's taking the most time is just the GI prepass. Cool, all right, so let's talk about textures for a minute. What kind of texture do we want on this building? So these are some of the reference images that I pulled from Pinterest. Now, I really like this, okay? It's, it's rough and gritty, but it's also kind of shiny, and I like how there's kind of like a, a a regularity to it, you know, it looks man-made. Um, I like this too, um, I mean, it's kind of a completely different shape for a building, but I just liked how much detail there was to it, okay? Uh, this was the original building that I sort of modeled hours after, and you can't really see much texture there. Um, here's another one, it, again, it's like, it's got this lattice around it that just really makes it feel dense visually. And I like this because the, the surface, it's almost like a brushed metal, kind of, you know, uh, blurry reflections, but a little bit shiny and glossy, and so I kind of wanted to capture some of that, um, you know, a little bit of this. So, for this type of a texture, where it looks like, you know, slate or something like that, um, you can try to mimic that using shaders inside of Cinema 4D, like the noise shader, for example. But a lot of times you're gonna just have to, you're gonna be fighting that, right? You don't really wanna be doing that um, and trying to mimic something when, you could just go to cgtextures.com or any other site that you like to find textures um, and, and just find a good texture, right? So let's just take a look. Uh, let's go to, um, let's see here. I mean, I can just type in slate 
and, and see what pops up and you see, okay, you've got all these great textures and a lot of them are already tiled for you. Like, look at this one, right? That's pretty interesting. I, I like it, but I feel like it's a little bit too old school looking. Um, and you know, it looks like a roof. It doesn't look like the side of a building. Um, so that's not exactly what I want. All right, so let's just try, um, not granite, but let's try, well, I don't know. Let's try granite. Let's see what happens if I type granite in into the search box. Yeah, there's some really nice ones. There's like some smooth ones like you'd find on like, you know, your your countertop. Um, there's stuff like this, which is kind of cool. I kind of like that, that brick texture. Um, and then you've got something like this. The only problem with this is it's not tiled and I could tile it. Um, I really like the texture of it though, it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna leave that one open, um, but let's keep looking, let's see what else we got. There's another page here. All right, and you know what I'm looking for ideally is one that says set tiled, because if it's tiled, like this one, set tiled huge. Um, and let me just take a look at that. What this means is that this is already a seamless texture that I can use, okay? Um, and if I click 3D tiling preview, this is pretty cool too. This will show you when this texture's tiled, what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. I like the roughness of it. It's got a ton of detail. Um, and I can use this texture kind of as a base to do some cool stuff. All right. So let's go back to this texture and let's say that's it. That's the one I want. Uh, and I am going to, uh, hop in here and download this and you can get a free membership, which lets you download, um, you know, basically like small versions of textures. Um, and then you can pay like a, a, a tiny amount of money and get much more high resolution, okay? I highly recommend CG Textures. It's an amazing, amazing resource. So what I can then do is uh, come in here and we can say, you know, building. And I can, uh, I can start just by putting that texture in the color channel, all right? So that's gonna probably have ended up on my desktop. So let's copy that in. Um, and I'm just gonna say no for now. And I'm gonna put this, not on the ground, sorry, on the uh, on this object, okay? Now, first thing you're gonna notice is the texture is not gonna map properly at first, okay? It's gonna look incorrect. So what we're gonna need to do is fix that. But I wanna show you what it looks like. Uh, so if this ever happens to you, you'll know how to fix it. See how it's stretching the texture right here? Um, that's because by default, Cinema 4D tries to use UVs to apply a texture. And if you don't know what UVs are, there's actually another tutorial, an old one on schoolofmotion.com that explains what UVs are. You could find that. Um, but I'm gonna change the projection to cubic. And that is the projection we're gonna use for our building as well. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let us um, you know, not have to worry about the shape of the building. It's just gonna apply it in a way where um, you know, it's gonna look perfect on every single side. Cubic mapping looks good for things that are sort of cubic, right? There we go. So now you've got this nice texture, but there's not a lot of variation to it. It's really, um, you know, it's just flat looking. I mean, it looks like a, basically you took a sticker of something that looks like granite and put it on there. So the next thing I wanna do is get into some of the more uh, elaborate details here, all right? So I have color and I also have reflectance, okay? Now reflectance in Cinema 4D 16 actually includes both your specular and your reflections. So uh, you've got the default specular um, and I'm gonna change that to a Beckman layer, okay? Um, so, what I wanna do is basically have some specularity and some reflection on here, and I wanna use this texture that I've already started using um, to, br to make the reflections and the specularity look a little more realistic, okay? So what I could do, for example, is um, I could go to uh, my reflection strength. I don't wanna keyframe that. I do not want to do that. Let me uh, remove animation there. Um, what I want to do is I want to put a um, I want to put a texture underneath reflection strength. Okay, so I'm going to just load in that same bitmap, and I'm going to turn reflection strength up to 50%. Oh, let me just turn it up to 100%, so you can see what it does. And I'm, before I do that, I want to go into this texture, and I want to turn the black point up a little bit, and the white point down to get more contrast. Right just to show you what this is gonna do. It's basically gonna take the brightness of this texture 
And, you know, parts that are bright are going to be very reflective and parts that are dark are not going to be very reflective. And it's going to give, uh, it's going to break up this texture a lot and make it a lot more realistic because in real life, things are not generally uniformly realist, uh, reflective or, or, you know, or uniformly shiny. There's variation to it. And so now you can see that the dark parts of that texture are not as shiny as the rest, okay? And it's gonna give this a lot more of a realistic look. So I basically wanna go through and use features like that to dial this in, okay? Um, I could also, um, let me come in here, so we've got reflection strength. You've also got specular strength, and you could do the exact same thing. I'm gonna copy that channel, and I'm going to paste it into my specular strength and turn my specular strength up. Now reflection strength, let me turn that down to 50, and I've got roughness at 50 right now too, which means that it's not a perfect reflection, it's kind of blurring it a little bit. Um, and I can also use a bump in the reflectance channel to break up the reflection without actually creating a bump map. Now in this case, what I actually wanna do is create a bump map. So I'm gonna go turn on bump, and I'm gonna paste that same texture in there, and let's leave the strength at 20, and let's just do a quick render and see what that looks like. And hopefully you're starting to see the process here. Uh, you, you know, you start with like a photographic texture, and then you can, um, you know, kind of get that looking the way you want. And then once you're happy with it, copy that same texture into other channels, into your reflectance channel to control reflection strength and specular strength and bump and all that kind of stuff. And you know what this is gonna end up doing is giving you a texture that has a lot more richness and, and variation to it, okay? Um, I don't have ambient occlusion turned on, but once I turn that on, that's gonna really accent you know, these intersecting parts here. But this is already feeling pretty cool, and I'm I know that this is gonna feel good as a base texture for me. Um, but you know, I also want a little bit of that tiling to it. I want it to feel, um, you know, I want it to, to, to have a little bit of this kind of quality to it. Let me pull up my picture viewer. I want to have some of this in there too. So how could we do that? So what I, what I could do um, is I could go into my bump channel, for example. Okay, so the bump channel just has this texture in it. I could set this to layer. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna basically give me a little mini Photoshop inside of Cinema 4D and part, the, so the first layer in my mini Photoshop is that bitmap. But I can then add another shader on top of it. So for example, I could go to, um, I could go to surfaces and I could say add tiles. And then I can go into my tiles options and let's turn the tile colors to, um, let's actually do them as black. And we'll do the grout is white like this, and actually, you know what, let me try it backwards first. So I want tiles to be white, right, and the grout to be black. Um, and so then I'm going to multiply that on top of this bitmap that's already there, all right? And so this is just for the bump, and you can see already kind of a preview of what's happening. Um, and let me set my output to uh, 960 by 540 here, and let me turn on that physical renderer because I think it's going to start to give us a little bit of a a little bit of a speed advantage, and I'm just going to do a quick render here um, to see what that bump, you know, now with that tile kind of on there, what that's doing. Wow, look at that! You see how like you know stacking the layers has given us this very interesting looking texture. Now those tiles, they feel I like the grooves a little bit too thick. And also, where there's a groove, I want things to be a little darker. So I'm gonna do two things, all right? One, I'm gonna come into the tiles, and I'm gonna take the grout width down to about, I don't know, let's, let's, let's do half of that. And the bevel width, I don't want as much of a bevel either. Right, so I'm just making those a little bit thinner, those lines. Um, cool, and that looks a little bit better to me. All right, you can see it's just like, I just made those a little bit thinner, cool. Then what I wanna do, is uh, let me just go ahead and copy this channel, and I'm gonna activate the Diffusion channel, and Diffusion lets you break up, uh, it, it basically lets you make things um, overall a little bit duller based on a texture. So I am going to paste that channel, 
Um, and you can see that that's going to make those grooves a lot darker. And, um, you know, maybe what I could do too, let me go into layer and let me just turn off bitmap for a minute and turn this to normal, right? So that it's not affecting the texture at all, it's just affecting the grooves. And if I change this mix strength, you can see what it's doing. I just want it to darken those grooves just a little bit. There we go. So you've got this pretty elaborate looking texture here. And, um, you know, I, I'm just curious what that's going to look like on the building. Um, so let me just go ahead uh, and just do a quick test. I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to the scene. I'm going to copy my final building. I'm going to paste it here. And uh, let's find that building. Where is that building here? Let me turn this cube off. All right, so there's the final building. Um, and I'm going to take this texture and just put it on there. And, uh, and I'm going to do a quick render. Now, the scale of the texture is probably going to need to be adjusted now because that building was so much smaller than that little cube that I was playing around with. Um, so you can see that the tiles are way too big. So I need to come in here and say tiles instead of one, let's try 10 and 10 by 10. So I'm basically scaling that texture down by a factor of 10. And that's starting to look okay. Um, I probably need to make sure that I'm mapping this correctly. I need this needs to be cubic mapping. Um, and let's try that. So you can see that this process, there we go, that's looking kind of cool. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. Let's see here. Let's see when we get in close here. And, and so all, right now, all of the parts of the building have the same texture. Um, and again, I'm going to make the inside of these windows have a different texture. Um, and uh, actually, let me show you how I'm going to do that, by the way. So if we just made um, you know, a new texture here and we said windows, all right? And so for the windows, um, you know, maybe we want like a dark, kind of a cool colored window. And we want that to, um, to have... Beckman Reflection. Um, we are going to want Fresnel on that, and since those are glass, we're going to use uh, Dielectric. Um, and, uh, and then for Reflection Strength, we can, we can turn that up quite a bit. Roughness can go down to zero because um, they're windows. They're going to be very reflective. Uh, maybe we can make them 10 just so they're a little... Uh, no, you know what? Zero. Let's leave it at zero. Um, 75 Reflection Strength. So what I want to do is take this window texture now and just put it on the front outline. Let me hide these other pieces for a minute. Um, and I want to tell it to only apply that texture to the C1 face. Now, uh, it's not showing up uh, correctly right now. And the reason is um, I, the way textures are kind of, uh, you know, evaluated in Cinema 4D, it depends on the order that the tags are coming. So if I want to get really specific, what I need to do is have this texture tag on the front outline and then have this texture come after it. Um, let me turn off the side as well. And if I hit render now, you'll be able to see, right, that I've got a totally different texture on the front of this thing than I do on the side, okay? I've got this shiny kind of reflecty one um, and, uh, and then on the side, and you can see it's, it's, it's acting like a window. It's a very dark window, actually, probably a little bit too dark. Um, so let me actually dock this picture viewer. I have a feeling we'll be using it quite a bit. Okay, cool. Uh, let me take the, um, let me take the color, brighten it up a little bit. And we'll just do another, another little render here. Cool. That's better. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, we've got our beautiful, um, our beautiful glassy texture. And then when we turn the front detail back on, copy this texture over it. Um, and let me turn the front trim back on, copy that same texture on it temporarily, even though it is going to change. Uh, and now you can see, um, and I'll have to probably zoom in so you can see this a little closer. But you know, if we're like looking at a shot like this or something, right? And we and we render that. Um, you're going to be able to see reflections here, whereas you're seeing the tile everywhere else. Cool? So we've got two different textures working working here. Okay, so now here's another thing. This, this trim is feeling a little small to me, especially when we're close to the building. So I'm going to take the trim. Um, let's knock that up. Let's try like 0.5 and 0.5. And I want a different texture on it too. 
Um, and I don't know. I'm thinking just kind of a maybe a matte texture that's maybe a little bit brighter than than this. So let's um. So we'll just make a new texture. We'll call this trim. Um, and maybe we'll you know we'll 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 make that texture a little bit cool, just like a tiny tiny bit cool. Um, and kind of in this like mid tone range. Uh, I'm gonna go to Reflectance and I'm gonna change this to Beckman and I'm gonna leave the roughness up and I, I want a little bit of specularity but I want it to be, um, I don't know, let's say 20% reflective but I want it to be pretty rough. I want it to feel matte. Cool and then let's see, oh and then of course I need to put that texture on the front trim and render that. Um, and this is gonna give us a little bit more contrast on the trim and break things up for us a little bit. Um, and that's starting to feel pretty interesting. There's a lot of detail going on and I may actually want to make these tiles a little bit smaller. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these little test renders um, to try and see, you know, try and see how this building looks from from different angles and from the top and from the bottom and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it looks like something got a little bit screwy uh, here. This looks like it, um, oh, I know what's going on. I have my side turned off, there we go. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing with the side to get those textures on and all that kind of stuff, but you can see we're already starting to get a lot of visual interest here. Um, and let me, try to, let me try to frame up something remotely resembling that first shot. Um, I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm gonna take a camera and we are gonna make this a 15 mil lens because that's what it is in the beginning. And we're kind of looking up at the building like this, right? Uh, and I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion now so we can see kind of what the effect of that is gonna be. And let's just do a quick test render, or it might not be that quick, and let's see what we're getting here. Cool. Um, and you can see the render times are starting to creep a little bit because now we've got all the bells and whistles turned on. Ambient occlusion is uh, definitely a little bit of a render hog, but it adds so much nice detail um, to this stuff. And we've got, you know, a lot of really nice kind of visual density happening here. It's going to be kind of a really interesting thing for your eye to look at. The trim, I feel like there's a little bit too much contrast there. Um, so I'm gonna play with that, but this is basically the process that I am gonna follow to nail the texture of this building. Um, and now you're gonna watch me work really fast for a long time uh, while you hear me do voiceover. This part of the process takes a while because I'm constantly rendering and re-rendering and re-rendering to try and find that look that feels the way I want it to. This process is sometimes called look development and there are some newer tools out there like the Octane Renderer or Thea Renderer that can speed this up uh, using your GPU to render faster. But I didn't want to bite off too many new things for this series, so I just kept it simple and just used the built-in Cinema 4D Renderer, which is great. After tweaking and rendering and tweaking and rendering, I ended up with this. I like it. There's a lot of contrast. There's plenty of detail in the texture to help sell the size of the building. And once the camera moves and we see light reflecting off the building, I think it's gonna look very interesting visually. Now, next up, we have the plant. The plant has to be designed a lot more deliberately because it's going to move. The building will just sit there looking cool and ominous, but the plant is alive. So it should be able to sway with the breeze open or close its petals, bend forwards or backwards, and at the end of the piece, it actually has to grow on right in front of us, so it needs to be modeled and rigged to do that. So, how do we do that? 